I just got to drive a brand new Tesla Model S Plaid, one of the only 25 delivered at the event last week. And even though I've already put out a video dedicated to the mind reading gear shifter, in this video, I want to tell you what it's like driving with the ever controversial yoke. Get ready to go plat, and we're gonna do it right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the wonderful world of Tesla and electric cars, well, you came to the right place. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. First things first, there will be a lot of different opinions on the steering wheel yoke in the next weeks and months, but once again, we got to give Tesla credit for innovating and pushing the boundaries of this stale auto industry. And this time, they've actually literally reinvented the wheel. A steering wheel, but a wheel nevertheless. And it looks like all refreshed Tesla Model S cars will have the yoke, at least for now, there is not even an option in the configurator screen to choose a traditional steering wheel. Now, the weird thing is that the NHTSA has not approved or disapproved the yoke, so we'll have to assume that Tesla is pretty confident that it will meet all of the safety requirements and standards. By the way, it's not just the shape of the steering wheel that was changed, it also now has no stocks at all. Not the gear shifter, not the blinkers, not the wiper controls. The blinker buttons are now on the left side of the yoke and the wiper controls along with the self-driving, the voice command and the horn buttons are on the right. Elon Musk did mention the yoke during the unveiling and just in case if you missed it, here's what he said. We have the, this yoke steering wheel, which is a little different, but I think once you try it, you'll think this is, it's, it's great. Um, the, you, your, the visibility uh, of the, the, the main screen is, is super clear, especially for uh, autopilot. So you can see the entire panoramic view of, you can basically see the mind's eye of the car. So let me tell you about my experience driving the Tesla Model S Plaid with the yoke. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Volkswagen ID4, which I am now a proud owner of. One of my favorite features is the enhanced voice command system. I can do a lot of things in my car using my voice, including opening the shade of the beautiful panoramic optional roof without taking my hands off the wheel. See if you love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. Well, first of all, this is not my first time driving a car with a steering wheel yoke. I have driven the Mercedes-Benz EQS prototype. And if you watched that video, you probably remember me being very uncomfortable driving it, but this time around, it is a production vehicle and I got to drive it on actual roads where the EQS had to be driven through some landing strips at an empty airport that Mercedes rented out for us, which was very cool. So here we go. I got to drive it around at the winery where we met David, the owner of the car. And then I took it out on the road and did some driving there. Now I have to say that it feels really cool and futuristic as long as you're driving on the straight line. On the other hand, I should mention that David, the lucky owner of the car, had this to say. I mean, just like what Elon said, it takes you know a few days to get used to it. I've had the car for 72 hours now. It's been on the streets, I don't know, a few hundred miles, and I love it. It drives like a sports car, I love it. So it seems that after driving it for a while, he did get used to it, and as I watched him drive the car himself, he did look more comfortable with it than I did. So let's break down some of the concerns that I had while I was driving this car with the yoke. First, as you can probably see with the EQS yoke and the Model S yoke, it is awkward to turn. You kind of have two points at which you're able to grip the wheel and the rest is air. So you have to be always aware what position the yoke is at at any given point of time. So to learn this, you kind of have to forget everything you know about driving a car. Also, as you've turned the wheel all the way to one side, you can't ease it back into the straight position by letting it slowly slip through your fingers, which I think all of us have gotten used to. Secondly, as I mentioned before, there is no stock for blinkers. You have to use the buttons on the wheel, which means you're no longer relying on touch. You kind of have to look down and see which position the yoke is in and then find the button for the turn and then press it. Lastly, the horn. <laughs> now, I know not all of us use the horn as intended. I personally use it 
you know, to save money on my anger management therapy. But when you do need to hit a horn, usually in an emergency situation, you don't really have time to figure out where the button for it at the current moment is. You just want to hit the center of the steering wheel and boom. Now, don't get me wrong. I totally understand that anything new does need some time to get used to. But will this new thing make the drivers more or less safe? I don't know. And does it make drivers experience better? I guess we'll have to find out as more people experience this over the next few months and years. By the way, if you are a premium member, check out a few zero to say 60 launches that we've done with the car. It's already posted for premium members. And if you're not a premium member, it's very easily fixed. All you have to do is click on the join button and you will have access to all kinds of premium exclusive material that I post there time to time. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.